Thank you, Daryl. If you are able, please stand and <clears throat> join me in the call to worship that's printed in our bulletin. God's goodness is breaking into the world. We did not expect the Spirit's movement. God gathers in those we judge to be outsiders. We witness this integrating as healing, wholeness, restoration, and peace.
Let us pray. Astonishing God, you give us a vision of the heavenly city, the new Jerusalem, your home among mortals on earth. All people and nations will stream to your city where they will find nourishment, healing, and peace. Even now, your blessing shines upon all the earth to help us see a larger vision of your loving care for all creation. And so you call us to move beyond our comfortable circles and into unfamiliar places as we seek to share your dream of a world made new in Christ. Amen. You may be seated. <coughs> Do not let your hearts be troubled, but confess your sins and God will give you peace. You will join me in the prayer that's printed in our bulletin. Gracious God, we await our judgment and often consider our ways and our ways. We do find peace as the absence of destruction, holding our heart as your name, and making our purposes perfect away. Too often we act as if we are reproductive witnesses, relating our worldview for as strong as we wish, and that our narrative contains the hope of the future. But God, this is not just from a simple substance. Forgive us our such evils, correct us with the truth, and teach us by your spirit. Amen. It is the Lord who opens your eyes to see. It is the Lord who summons our hearts to hear. It is the Lord who returns us to God's presence. Peace, peace, peace. You are God. You are God. You belong. In Jesus Christ, you are restored. Thanks be to our God forever and ever. And now let us turn in our hearts to God for a few moments of silent prayer.
living God, you sent your apostle to preach the gospel to women gathered by a river in a secluded place of prayer. There, a businesswoman named Lydia was led by the Spirit to hear your word as truth. You opened her heart in love, and she opened her home to the spreading of the gospel. By the power of your Holy Spirit, fling wide the doors of our heart this day as we hear your word of life, that we too may open our lives to serve your world in love. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Our Old Testament reading today is from the book of Deuteronomy. It is actually the last chapter of the book of Deuteronomy. And it tells us of the death of Moses, the last uh, bit of his life, as he and God communed for the last time of Moses on earth. So let us listen for what God is saying to us through these words. Then Moses went up from the plains of Moab to Mount Nebo, to the top of Pisgah, which is opposite Jericho. And the Lord showed him the whole land, Gilead as far as Dan, all Naphtali, the land of Ephraim and Manassas, all the land of Judah as far as the western sea, the Negev and the plain, that is the valley of Jericho, the city of palm trees, as far as Zoar. The Lord said to him, this is the land of which I swore to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, saying, I will give it to your descendants. I have let you see it with your eyes, but you shall not cross over there. Then Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab at the Lord's command. He was buried in a valley in the land of Moab, opposite Beth Peor, but no one knows his burial place to this day. Moses was 120 years old when he died. His sight was unimpaired and his vigor had not abated. The Israelites wept for Moses in the plains of Moab 30 days. Then the period of mourning for Moses was ended. Joshua, son of Nun, was full of the spirit of wisdom because Moses had laid his hands on him, and the Israelites obeyed him, doing as the Lord had commanded Moses. Never since has there arisen a prophet in Israel like Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face. He was unequaled for all the signs and wonders that the Lord sent him to perform in the land of Egypt against Pharaoh and all his servants and his entire land. And for all the mighty deeds and all the terrifying displays of power that Moses performed in the sight of all Israel. And then turning to the New Testament, uh, we have a story of Paul as he makes his first steps onto the continent of Europe. So let us continue to listen. Uh, during the night, Paul had a vision. There stood a man of Macedonia pleading with him and saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. When he had seen the vision, we immediately tried to cross over to Macedonia, being convinced that God had called us to proclaim the good news to them. We set sail from Troas and took a straight course to Samothrace the following day to Neapolis, and from there to Philippi, which is a leading city of the district of Macedonia and a Roman colony. We remained in this city for some days. On the Sabbath day, we went outside the gate by the river where we supposed there was a place of prayer, and we sat down and spoke to the women who had gathered there. 
A certain woman named Lydia, a worshiper of God, was listening to us. She was from the city of Thyatira and a dealer in purple cloth. The Lord opened her heart to listen eagerly to what was said by Paul. When she and her household were baptized, she urged us, saying, If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come and stay at my house. And she prevailed upon us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I guess you noticed the title of the sermon today. Well, uh, I became familiar with the song, Down to the River to Pray, when it appeared as part of the soundtrack for the movie, Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? It was sung by a country music and bluegrass star, Alison Krauss, but its roots run way back to African-American slave spirituals. Now, in the movie, the song begins with Krauss's haunting voice singing, As I went down to the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the starry crown? Good Lord, show me the way. She was joined by another voice for the chorus. And then in the next verse, and as the song continued, additional voices chimed in until by the end of the song, an entire choir majestically lift their voice in praise, singing about going down in the river to pray. Well, that song popped into my head when I read our text in preparation for today. And I think it speaks to me and perhaps to you as we reflect upon prayer this morning because it reminds us that while we often pray alone, there is real power in gathering together in a place of prayer. Uh, you know, there are many different prayers that we offer to God. For example, Presbyterian writer Anne Lamont wrote a book called Help, Thanks, Wow, The Three Essential Prayers. Well, that pretty well covers it. But I would suspect, and I think Lamont would probably agree, that the majority of our prayers fall in the help category. And often those help prayers are more like bargaining sessions with God. God, if you could get me a pony, I will obey my parents every time. God, if you get me an A on that test tomorrow, I'll tell all my friends that you're great. God, if you could get that girl over there to talk to me, I'll go to church on Sunday morning. God, if you get me that new job, I will start tithing my salary. God, if you heal my mother from cancer, I'll be a better son. Yeah, bargaining with God is quite a common prayer. And that type of prayer is not all bad. In a famous scene about uh, the life of Martin Luther, the young Martin Luther found himself in the middle of a field when a terrible thunderstorm caught him by surprise. As he fell to the ground in fear, Luther called out to God, O oh Lord, if you save me from this storm, I will become a monk. When the storm passed, Luther found himself still alive, and so he entered a monastery 
And from there, years later, began the Protestant Reformation. Now, while, like with Martin Luther, God can work with whatever we bring, there does seem to be something lacking if our only and even primary focus on prayer is an attempt to bargain with God. First of all, because bargaining with God treats God like a heavenly vending machine. If you put in enough money or prayers or promises, then God will give us what we want, right? Uh, I know that I've prayed prayers like that, and I suspect you have too. So, if we are honest, bargaining prayers are really all about us, as if we had power over God. Pastor and retiring president of Princeton Theological Seminary, Craig Barnes, critiqued bargaining prayers in this way. It isn't that our prayers are powerful enough to bring about changes. They are no more powerful than we are. It is God who is powerful. We might not know God's will, but we can be certain that God's power will change us, will transform us. Praying that God's prayer will change us and will transform us, that's the kind of prayer that we find in our text for today. Now, Paul and Silas have been in Philippi for several days. If you remember in other cities uh, that Paul visited, it was his practice to go to the local synagogue on the Sabbath and begin teaching devout Jews about Jesus. But here it's different. After several days in Philippi, Paul and Silas chose a different approach. When the Sabbath comes, instead of going to the synagogue, they make their way outside the city gate and go down to the river where they suppose that there was a place of prayer. Okay, now let's pause right here for just a moment. Paul and Silas do not immediately arrive in Philippi and begin bargaining with God. There was nothing like, oh God, you gave me a vision to come here, so let's get this show started. Give me a few converts. I'll preach to them. Instead, Paul and Silas just wait a few days. They investigate. They ask some questions. So when the Sabbath come, they know where they are to go to this place outside the city gates, to the place outside of the control of the local authorities, to a place where they supposed there would be people gathered to pray. It's vital that you and I find a place where we together might gather to pray. So Paul and Silas go outside the city gates down to the river where this place of prayer was, and they sat down, and horror of horrors, they spoke to the women who were gathered there. You know, Jewish men did not talk to women uh, other than the ones that they were actually like related to. But among these women was one named Lydia, Lydia was a worshiper of God. Now, at this time, that meant she was a Gentile who was curious about the Jewish faith. One who came to listen and learn, but had not made any personal commitment to God. One sitting on the fence, we might say. 
as part of her faith journey and exploration, Lydia had also come to this place of prayer on this particular morning. Did she come often? Or was this her first time? Well, the text doesn't tell us. All we know is that she was there on that particular morning with the other women whom, when Paul and Silas came speaking about Jesus. And notice what happens next, because this is the key to this uh, entire text. The Lord opened her heart to listen eagerly to what was said by Paul. The Lord opened her heart to listen eagerly to what was said by Paul. Scripture is clear here that Paul and Lydia had both done their part. They have both gathered at this place of prayer. They have put themselves in the place where God can work. And that's exactly what happened. The Lord opened Lydia's heart. That's what Craig Barnes was talking about when he said, it is God who is powerful. We may not know God's will, but we can be certain that God's power will change us, will transform us. God's power will transform us. It will change us. God is the only one who can do that. And yet, we have work to do as well. Just like Paul and Silas going to the river, to that place of prayer, just like Lydia going to the river, to that place of prayer, we need to put ourselves in a place of prayer so that God can work a powerful ministry among us. So, let me ask you that this this morning. How often do you gather at the river to pray? Well, maybe not literally at the river, but a place where you can open your heart and mind to God, not just seeking and bargaining with God, but opening your heart and mind to God's transforming and life-altering power. Whether you've been to that place often or it's been a while, God is calling you back. God wants to transform your life. Your journey of faith is not finished yet, even if you're 95 years old. God has more in store for you if you are willing to take the time to show up and pray. God will do the rest. Someone once said, our part is to be available to God as well as we can. Don't worry, we don't do it very well. Our best efforts usually have a sort of kinda, oh wow, I forgot quality to them. The good news is that if we even try to show up, God can work with us. God can work miracles with that. Show up to the river to pray. God can work miracles with that. Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. And now, having heard the word read and proclaimed, let us rise in body or in spirit as we are able and proclaim what we believe. I believe in God the
He ascended into heaven and sits on the right hand of the God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Okay, uh, before we start the prayers of the people, I would ask, are there uh, people for whom we should pray during this prayer? Are any joys, any concerns? Yes, Candy. Uh, for my son-in-law, Scott, who's having some heart difficulties and is in the hospital. Okay, for uh, Scott. And, okay, in the hospital. Hope everything goes well with him. So, any others? In that case, let us now turn our hearts and minds to God. Ever present God, we join with the psalmist in imploring, O oh God, come to our assistance. O oh Lord, hasten to help us. You promise always to be with us. We ask that you be with Scott, who is in the hospital with heart issues. We also ask your continuing presence among all who are caring for him, for the doctors and the nurses and his family. We ask that you be with those who mourn and those who comfort them. Especially we lift up Today, the family of Pat Clark and the family of Pastor Cassie in the passing of her husband. This is the time of the year when people are traveling, so we ask that you be with those who are traveling. Give them safe journeys and traveling mercies. You are loving and gracious, so we lift up to uh, you those who have cause to rejoice for the weather that you have sent us, for the rain that is promised. And finally, we pray for those whose needs cannot be spoken and those whose needs are known only to you. Ever-present God, on this sixth Sunday of Easter, we still marvel at what you have done through Jesus Christ. Even as Jesus prepares to depart the presence of the disciples, he makes arrangements for them and for us to be cared for, to be encouraged, and to be reminded of his love for us. We hear Jesus' words to us today, telling us not to let our hearts be troubled and not to be afraid. But even as those words fall from our lips, we still find ourselves troubled and afraid. We are troubled by the war in Ukraine and afraid that the violence there will last much longer than anyone anticipated. We are troubled by the division in our own nation and afraid that the torn fabric of our tapestry may never be mended. We are troubled by the many ways injustice makes its presence known in the world, and afraid that it will try to stay permanently. We are troubled by the aches and pains of illness in our bodies, and are afraid that we may never again feel like ourselves again. We are troubled by grief that plants itself in our hearts and are afraid that even long after the loss, there will still be, it will still be there growing larger. Holy Comforter, amid all the, that troubles us and makes us afraid, remind us of your peace a peace that surpasses our understanding, a peace that makes its home in the violence, division, injustice, illness, and grief of the world, so that one day 
Peace will not need to be made any longer. It will just be. We ask all these things in the name of the risen Lord, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The earth has yielded its increase, and God has richly blessed us. Therefore, bring your tithes and offerings, and come into God's courts with thanksgiving and praise. Once again, the offering plates are at the back of the sanctuary near the doors.
giving God, as spring bursts forth its blossoms in witness to your love, you bless us from generation to generation with the new life of Easter faith. All that we have and all that we are come from you, O God, so we gladly share the offering that others too may be blessed for the sake of Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. And as we go forth from this pl place, keeping ourselves where God can use us, remember that wherever you go, God is sending you. Wherever you are, God has put you there. God has a purpose in your being there. Christ who dwells within you has something he wants to do through you. And God has given you the Holy Spirit to guide you, equip you, and sustain you along the way. Believe it and go in peace to love and serve the Lord. And now may the grace of God, the love of Jesus Christ, and the peace and fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen.